Shortly after I walked into my new school, a huge fight broke out among the girls. After things were quickly under control, I immediately called a meeting in the school's auditorium to introduce myself. I started listing as forcefully as I could. My expectations for their behavior went all of a sudden. A girl way in the back of the auditorium, she stood up and she said, Miss, why do you keep calling this a school? This is not a school. And the violence still was not subsiding. And we were getting more and more concerned. Each day it gets scarier. Somebody just thought it was cute to start on fire. To the one day the kid said, you need a bullet in your head. Just said to, to me was that I have a bullet with your name on it. I know guns are really accessible in this neighborhood, so I don't think that it's unreasonable that he can get his hand on a gun and shoot me. That was the first time that I woke up and said, Linda, I don't, I don't know what you've done here because your kids are going to be without a mother. And that scared me to death. Now, I really wasn't keen on non-violent assembly programs for a violent school. They came in, they showed a film. I don't know where they got this film from, but it was a true reenactment of the Columbine school shooting. So I'm sitting there along with my staff and we're absolutely horrified and scared to death. When I heard this outburst of laughter and I was shocked and I said, you gotta talk to me about why you're laughing at something so horrific. And one of the girls, in a sweet voice, she said, Miss Wayman, do you really think that was something? She said, we see that every night on our block. That's nothing compared to what we see. I understood. I understood why there was so much violence. Because the kids were in a deep state of despair. They were so traumatized by their own lives, they could not even feel for others. I knew the only way to turn this school around was to love those children for who they were. You look great this morning, young people. I love to see you smiling. I love to see you happy. I want you to be happy today, tomorrow, and forever. And remember, young people, if nobody didn't tell you they loved you today, you remember I do, and I always will. But people would say to me, how could you love children like that? Look at them. I had one particular student released from a juvenile facility that was assigned to my school my first year at Strawberry Mansion High School. He was so violent. His behavior, we could not control. After being suspended for beating up so many children, we didn't know what to do. So one day I said to him, I'm gonna sign you up for a program. Let's go, Anthony, let's go. This is my first time ever playing quarterback. I feel good, I stepped up today. He was our star football player leading us to a winning record of 8-0. We just, just won. We're just celebrating. What are we, 10-0, 9-0, what are we? I think we what are we're, we? Undefeated. we're undefeated. 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 First season ever. One day, while we're in conversation, he said, Mrs. Wayman, one day I'm going to the University of Pittsburgh. I said, have you ever been to the University of Pittsburgh? He said, no. I only saw it on television. As soon as I left my office, I called my counselor. I said, plan a trip to the University of Pittsburgh. She said, for how many students? I said, one. He graduated this coming June, 
and he was honored with a leadership award. 55 out of 92 senior students have been accepted into college, but for some, that's not enough. They can't afford the deposit fees guaranteeing their place, like senior Christine Holland. If I had the um, $550 to go to Philadelphia University, I would go. <laughs> you know, I love I might not be able to get him into Harvard, but I can give him some hope. And God, don't underestimate the power of hope, because when children have hope, they can succeed. Four years later, she was given a full scholarship by Philadelphia University. And so Wayman whispers once again what she used to say to all the kids. And remember, if nobody told you they loved you today, no, I do. And I always will. I love you too. <laughs> People gonna tell you sometimes that you're nothing. People gonna tell you you can't get up, and you're gonna say, yes, I can. And if nobody else expects for you to do so, I expect for you to do so. I just believe it's my calling. And I believe my whole life journey is for me to try to help them the best that I can. I truly believe that. When we are faced with unbelievable challenges, we must stop and ask ourselves, so what? Now what? What are we going to do about it? If you are standing in one spot, afraid about what would happen if you choose left over right, do yourself a favor. Do not worry about directional order. Just be sure to move. Move one step closer to fulfill that dream you have always had for yourself. Go get it. You got it. Because not taking a risk will only lead to regret. Time is ticking. Tick, tick, tick.